my name is Jeremy Paul. I'm the Dean of the Law School here at Northeastern. Uh, this is my second year. Uh, I came here from the University of Connecticut where I was Dean for five years. Uh, my students say I'm a 2L now. So. Well, first I wanted to congratulate the organizers on a truly interdisciplinary uh, conference. So this conference is jointly sponsored by our law school, the DeMore McKim School of Business, uh, and the College of Art, Media, and Design. Uh, and it fits because it's a conference about collaborations across disciplines and how innovation is more likely to take place when you have people who think differently in the room. Uh, and so they're modeling what it is that they're talking about. So that was my first point. And then I really wanted to have an opportunity to share with the group uh, first of all, why I think law is deeply connected to innovation. Uh, my starting point was that if you think about the history of our country, uh, perhaps our greatest innovation is our Constitution, uh, which is, of course is law. Uh, and so what, our gift to the world uh, started with a legal system. Uh, and so people ought to remember that. Uh, you have to acknowledge there is some tension between uh, the legal profession, which is built on the idea that laws are settled in the past and we follow them, uh, and innovation, which is a change mode. Uh, but the better laws are the ones that are flexible and respond to changing circumstances. And I use some examples of legal innovations, starting with the corporation, the joint venture, the condominium, the timeshare, uh, the same-sex marriage, uh, all of which are things that have contributed to the growth of our uh, country. Uh, and which I think our law school is uniquely positioned uh, to further. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is because of our co-op program. So our students are out in the professional world four times while they're in school. Uh, I say to people that if you're dean of another law school and you want to change your curriculum to respond to the changes in the profession, uh, you have to go through a committee. I don't have to go through any committees. As the profession changes, my students get a different and better uh, experience. Uh, so I talked a little bit about that program how our students uh, are encouraged to be reflective while they're out in the professional world and ask the question, what's the mission, where they are, what's the business model. It's a much more uh, self-reflective style of education. Uh, I also talked about teamwork. So our students are placed, when they arrive in school, uh, in a law office, sort of a simulated thing, and they have a client, uh, like a public service organization, and they have a project to solve for them. And they work the whole year on it as a team. They get you know, evaluated as a team. And at the end of the year, they present a report. Here are the ideas that we have for, for our client. Uh, I also talked about interdis interdisciplinary work. And then I talked a little bit about a project that we have going called the New Law Lab, which is an innovative way of thinking about delivering legal services more cost effective, uh, perhaps not only entirely by lawyers, uh, so that people who are now struggling to afford legal services they need get them. So that, that was what my remarks were about. Our university president uh, says to people all the time that in the future, you won't ask whether a university has an online presence. It would be like asking if they have electricity. So from my point of view, I feel the same way about intellectual property for law schools. Intellectual property more and more will be the core and real property will be sort of in the background as opposed to the other way around. So we're trying to build that area up. Now your question is a good one because intellectual property is built on a very complex structure. So on the one hand, one way to get innovation is with very strong IP protection. If you know your invention will be protected, so you either have a monopoly on it, you're going to put a lot more work into investing to build it. But the moment you're done building, I've gotten what I can get out of you, right? You've built it now. And now, if I want growth and change, I want your invention out and about to as many people as possible. So at that moment, now I want less IP protection so people can build on your idea and modify it. So IP is a very tricky regime to figure out how do you have just enough protection so to get the right amount of investment without having so much that you hinder all future developments. And that's an ongoing struggle. So every time there's a, what you might describe as a methodological change, such as open source or 3D printing, the balance has to be restruck to figure out how that's going to work. A no IP regime would be a disaster, right? Because then there'd be no incentive for anyone to do anything. Uh, an overly restrictive IP regime would be equally a disaster. And so there, we're constantly working on that. Uh, and that's going to be an ongoing struggle for a long time to figure out how exactly to make that happen. 
Uh, but our students, we have two very strong tenure track faculty members in addition to our professor of practice, Susan Montgomery, who was one of the organizers of the conference. Well, I do think Northeastern, as universities go, is a good climate for innovation. We have a very visionary president uh, and a structure around him that's aimed to get through obstacles. Innovation is good when the changes lead to progress for people. So the fact that there's some deliberation, that's not such a bad thing either. It, universities do often tend sometimes to over-deliberate, uh, and so we, you have to work at that. You know, look, look at the Senate. They're just, the U.S. Senate has been just, even today, uh, they changed the rules on deliberation in the filibuster because you're constantly working at that. You, you want collaboration. The crowdsourcing presentation that we heard today from uh, local motors was about how to bring more voices in. Uh, and yet they didn't see any conflict between more voices and speedier and better change. So that's what we're shooting for. Well, for me, because I'm coming from the law perspective, uh, I can't add much about what's the science, you know, what makes a good car, uh, in the, the engineering and so forth. But one of the points that a conference such as this establishes is that innovation happens when the culture is right. And so studying the question of how to build the culture that will promote innovation, and that includes, as I said before, teamwork, diversity, very important to get different uh, voices in the room, and that includes disciplinary diversity as well as you know, ethnic and uh, racial diversity or religious. Uh, so th that's important, but building a culture is also involved in thought. What's the legal structure? How's it, how, how can you build an institution so it f fosters innovation? And so what you get at a conference such as today is people hear how different institutions have created different sorts of cultures so as to foster innovation. Uh, so it's very exciting, actually. Yeah. So Northeastern as a university has one of the highest percentages of international students of any university in the country. Uh, and we also have at the law school, a master's program for international students. We have 25 students in that program this year from 15 countries and five continents. And that, of course, is a great thing for promoting diversity and innovation because you get so locked into your own perspective, you think, well, this is the only way it can be done. And then someone from another country gets up and says, well, here's how we do it. And it's totally different. And you go, oh, wow, that's an that's a interesting thing. I mean, I guess the last point is, the United States as a country is never going to be successful as the low-cost producer. So if we want to continue to uh, create growth and opportunity for the vast majority of our citizens, we have no choice but to embrace an innovation culture. Uh, and so anything we can do to foster that I think is exciting.